time, time ages all things. Time makes bread stale, rots food, corrodes simple metals, bring down buildings, all because of time. Time turns a young man into an old man in its course. Times make strong and powerful men into weak and powerless men. Time has this ability to change and reshape societies. All this is the power of time. But there is one thing time should not age. And that's called your faith. Your faith must not age with time. Your faith must not lose its power and its effectiveness with time. Time did not change who the Lord Jesus was. The Bible says he was, he is, and he will always be. He is eternal, consistent. He does not change. Jesus said the following, heaven and earth will fade, but my words remain the same. In other words, my, my words my words will not be affected by time. My word will not change to accommodate society 10 years from now, a thousand years from now. The word of God does not change to accommodate people, to accommodate religion. The word of God does not change to accommodate new things coming to the world. No, the word of God is constant and will never change heavens will fade away the earth fades away but the word of God is constant it remains the same if you want to have a strong life if you want to have a strength in your faith you have to base your faith on what is constant if you base your faith on anything else it's not stable enough. You are going to be building your house. You are going to be building your life upon the sand. And when we build upon the sand, when the wind blows, when the water comes, the, the ground moves, sand shifts place, and the house collapses. And many people based their faith, they based their lives on sin, on feelings, on emotions, on desires, on other people's opinion. They based their faith on other people's opinion, but that sin is not stable. So their opinion passed. And there goes the person who built their, who built their lives upon a third person opinion the house collapses, the life falls. But if you build your life upon the word of God, it is stable. If you build your marriage upon the word of God, your marriage will be stable. If you bring up your children upon the word of God, your children will be a blessing because the word of God is stable. It doesn't pass. Everything else will pass. You build your life on knowledge. Knowledge changes. People discover better ways, easier ways. Because time changes everything else. The first computer, listen to this, the first computers made in the world, the CPU, the processor of the computer was bigger than this church. Nowadays, you have your cell phone with chips and, and things that are nano chips. Back in those days, everything was big. But time changes all things. But not the word of God, and much less your faith, it should change. Let us talk about old members. To be an old member in the church. Old so time changes all things. As our body ages, 
we develop certain problems that flows with your body being there for long. And sometimes not maintained properly as well. You develop certain things that God can heal through your faith. But you know your body is not the same. You can't run as fast. You can't walk as long. Because time has changed the strength of your body. But must never change the strength of your faith. So talking about time. Let us talk about a church in the book of Revelation. Let us go to the Bible now. Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1. The Bible says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things, says he, who holds the seven stars in his right hand. So look at this picture here. He holds the seven stars where? In his right hand. So imagine Jesus holding seven stars in his right hand. Who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Now the seven stars symbolize the seven angels of the churches. The seven pastors who led the churches in the book of Revelation. Which symbolizes the totality of of Christianity, the strength and the weaknesses in the Christian church. That's what the, the seven churches they symbolize. Totality of the Christians and the challenges we face throughout the ages and will face as well. So the Bible says he holds the seven stars, the seven pastors, symbolizing all the pastors, all the angels of the church throughout the world, in their own conditions, he holds them. And the lamp stand now symbolizes the churches. The lamp stand symbolizes the churches. The priest would light up, listen to this, the menorah, the lamp stand, which would bring light to an environment of darkness. That's what the church symbolizes. The church has to be lit by whom? By God. Who is the light of the church? The Holy Spirit. And that's what the church is meant to do. To bring light in darkness. That's what the church is meant to do. The church is meant to bring light to those who are suffering. To those who are struggling. That's what the churches are meant to do. The churches are meant to bring light and hope to the hopeless, to those who are in darkness. When I came to church, I was in darkness. But in the church, I found the light of God. And so did many of you. You were hopeless, and in the church, you found hope. You were godless, and in the church, you found God. You were faithless, and in the church, you found faith. In other words, you were in darkness. And you saw the light of God. That's what the church are meant to do. And to be. And Jesus is the one in the midst of the churches. And why is he in the midst of the churches? Because he's the one who brings light. The Bible calls him the high priest. The intercessor of his people. And the high priest would light up. The candelabra, the menorah, the lamp stand in the holy of holies. That's why he's in the midst of the churches. Because he is the light. He gives light. That's who he is. And he wrote the following to the church in Ephesus. I know your works, your labor, your patience. And that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. And have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience. And have labored for my name's sake 
in have not become what? Weary. So look at the attributes here. The work were, were good. They did not get weary. Their body was not tired. They were doing their work. They were not physically tired of doing their work. They were patient. They would put to the test those who would say, we are apostles too. They would put them to the test. And if they found them liars, they would not allow them to be there, to preach there. They were, in a way, in a way they were zealous with the work they were doing. But the Bible says the following. Nevertheless, I have these against you. Now, it's not these in the plural. It's these in singular. God had how many things against them? One. Look at how many positive things God had on their favor. Let us go there verse 2 again. This is on their favor. I know your works, your labor, your patience. You cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are found liars. You have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and not become weary. Look at how many things on their favor. If God was working on a balance, on a, on a scale, on a scale, they had multiple things on their favor in how many things against them. One. So if it was a scale, how many things on your favor? All this much. How many things do you have against you? So the positive would outweigh the negative. But that's not how God sees. Perhaps you think if I do a lot of good, I can do something bad and God will not judge me. No. That's not the way. If I do much good, I'll have credit with God. I can mess up a little bit. You will lose. You will lose. They had so many positive points on their favor. And only one negative. And the negative point was the following. Nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left... Your first, your first love. It's not your first works. You are still working and you do not get weary. But you have lost your first love. Pay attention. Your love grew old. Your works are the same, but your love grew old. Time, time has made your love grow cold or old. Your works are the same, but your love is not the same. And that's what God, he looks at. And that's what God is looking for in you. Is your love old? Has your love grown old? Has your servitude to God grown old? As I said before, time Time has the power to corrode. Time has the power to stale. Time has the, the, the power to, to make a person who is alive dead. Dead. That's the power of time. But if you allow time to change the way you love God. To change the way you believe in Him. It doesn't matter how many positive things you have on your favor. You may lose your salvation because of that one negative thing in the book of Malachi God's reprimand to the, to the priests was the following they were presenting to God the blind sacrifice they were presenting to God the lame sacrifice because they said the table of the Lord is contemptible meaning it's not holy it's common whatever we put there God will accept we are talking about priests. These priests had lost what? Their first love. So God knows that when a person loses their first love, they may even do things that pleases God, but not in a way that pleases God. 
not in a way that pleases him. The Bible says, Gideon built an altar. But the same night, God said, hey, build another altar in the proper arrangement. Why? The way he built was not pleasant to whom? God, he even built it, but was not pleasant. Perhaps you pray, but your prayer is not pleasant. Because your prayer is not, is, is not with faith or sincerity. You pray because you are taught to pray. That's where this prayer comes from. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's where this prayer comes from. It's a prayer with no sincerity. It's a prayer with no love. It's a prayer that should not be a prayer. They had many positive things on their favor. But there was one negative. They had lost their first love. Time made their love grow old. When a man tells the wife, I don't love you anymore. Or the wife tells the man, I don't love you anymore. How can they keep that marriage together? They can, for the sake of the children, men, you do that. Okay, we, we just stay, you know, you have your life, I have mine. It's a thing of, of, our, of our days. There's no love. There's no love, there's no pleasure in being together. There is no joy in being together. And many people have brought this kind of behavior towards God. But know this. God holds that against us. Do not allow time. To kill your faith. Or your love for God. Now the Bible says. Solution. God give us the solution now. How to fix the loss of the first love. The first step is. Remember therefore. From where you have. Fallen. When we watch testimonies. Like the testimony we have watched. Pastor Williams. Was a killer. Was a drug addict. When you watch his testimony. If one day he says. God my love for you is cold. Is smaller. God tells him. Remember how you came to the church. Remember where you have come from. Remember you were in prison. You killed a person or people. Remember how many times you were treated as an animal. In your childhood I saw you bound with shackles. They bound you with shackles. Do you remember where you come from? That's what God is telling you now. If your love is growing cold, if your love is getting old, if time is aging your love or your faith, remember from where you have fallen. Remember you were suicidal. Remember nobody loved you. Remember how you were abandoned by everybody else. That's how God shows you that you have to go back. And that's the first step for you to solve this problem. I am losing my first love. I am getting cold in my faith. Remember who you were when God first met you. Remember where you have fallen. Where you have come from. That's the first step. Remember where you have fallen. And then you have to repent. You have to see your mistake. You have to see how you have taken God for granted. How many people take God for granted so much? They don't come to church even on Sunday. They come from time to time. They say, I am busy. That's how they treat God. I am busy, God. And God says, remember when you had no job, you were not busy and you prayed and I gave you a job. And now you are too busy for me. So repent, acknowledge your mistakes, set God where he belongs as the first in your life. As the one whose words matter more than everyone else in your life. Then you repent and you go back to the first works. The first works when it was pleasurable for you to come to church. Perhaps you're watching us and you forgot how beautiful it was when you came to church on Sunday. How wonderful you felt when everyone was seeking for God, worshiping Him. 
Perhaps it fell from your memory. You can't remember. When you want to remember the things of God, you can't, you can't keep that in your mind. You are allowing the devil to steal that away from you. Remember, repent, and go back. That's what God is saying. Remember, repent, and go back. If you can't remember, you will not repent or go back. But if you can remember, you will be able to repent and do what? Come back. Come back. And the Bible says, or else, hmm? or else, now comes a threat. They had so much on their favor and only one thing against them. But Jesus said, remember, Repent and go back or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So many things which are positive on your favor, one negative thing. But if you do not repent from this one negative thing, listen, do not deceive yourself. God will not tolerate our sins because of our justice. The Bible says, the day the righteous commit iniquity, all his righteousness will not be remembered. It doesn't matter how many years you have been serving God. It doesn't matter how many years you have been with God. The day you commit iniquity, all those years have become nothing in the sight of God. So it doesn't matter how many good you've done, if you do one bad thing. And the threat you hear, not the threat per se, God's not threatening. He's telling you what's going to happen. I will remove your lampstand. Once again, the lampstand symbolizes the church. And the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says, we are the temple of God. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We are the church. We are the church. Now, if he removes the lampstand, it means you are no longer the church. If you had light, you will no longer have what? Light. And what is the light? Who is the light? The Holy Spirit. When the apostles in the 120 were inside of the upper room, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it was like tongues of fire coming upon them. Now, if he removes the lampstand, you will go back to the state of darkness. And many of those living in darkness today, even though they've known the light of God. Some people think like this past, I've been a Christian long enough since I was born. And that doesn't make being a Christian today easier for you. On the contrary, make, on the contrary makes you sloppy. There are many Christians who are sloppy today because they think I've been a Christian for too long. I know it very well. God doesn't want you to know it very well. He wants you to do it very well. He wants you to be it very well. Not only to know. Nowadays we see people who have been Christians for 20, 30 years. Being overtaken by those who have just converted. Just like Jesus said, Jesus said, some will come from the east, from the west, and sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the children of the promise will be left outside. So there are many people who have been Christians for a long while, left outside without the Holy Spirit, without the presence of God, without the transformation of their lives. And they say, God, why? Because they allowed their faith to get old they allowed their love to get old they say i know it too well doesn't mean you are saved doesn't mean you are saved go back before it is too late before you become darkness 
One of these days we showed you a testimony in the empowering word at nine of a man who was born in the church. Muller, right? Lennon Muller. That was the, the gentleman. He, was, he grew up in, like my wife. An old member of the church. Grew up in the church. As a boy, he was in the church running up. You know, running up and down in the church. He was like that. He grew up in the church. But then he decided to leave the faith. God cannot stop your decision. So he left the faith. But he grew up in the church. So he left the faith. He was not killed. He was not killed by a miracle. Six shots. Shot six times. The mark of the surgery here. From here to here. Do you remember his testimony? Yes. Only by a miracle he was not killed. And the miracle was only because his mother was fighting for him on the altar. Every campaign she was making sacrifices to save her son. Every campaign she was there, God save my son. I sacrifice my all. I give you my all so you can save my son. The only reason why he did not die. The only reason why God preserved him. Because she was on the altar fighting for him. He lost his first love. She didn't. He lost his faith. She didn't. The only reason why he was saved. Now, if you lose your first love, who will be there fighting for you? If you go back to darkness as he went back to darkness, who will fight for you? Perhaps you are blessed enough to have a family that is in the same faith Perhaps you're not. So if you lose this light, who is going to bring light to you now? Then the Bible says on verse 7, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to it from the tree of life. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, it's a very interesting thing here now. The reason why God cast Adam and Eve out of paradise was because he said now they are going to eat the fruit of life. So if I don't take them from here, if they ate the fruit of which I told them not to eat, now they will take the fruit of the tree of life. So God... Cast them out of paradise so they would not live forever serving the devil. Now Jesus is saying, if you overcome the loss of the first love, I am going to give you. I will give you from the fruit of the tree of, of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He will give you. In other words, your body will age. And will pass, but you will have eternal life. But for you to have this eternal life, you cannot allow time to make your faith old. You cannot allow time to make your love old. You have to remain the faith. The same enthusiasm you had when you first met Jesus. If you have been in the church for a long while, remember when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, Wednesday for you was very joyful. Today's Wednesday. Who remember those days? Wednesday for you, you woke up in the morning. Today's Wednesday. I will go to the church. I will seek for the Holy Spirit more and more. Who remember those days? Don't you? was special, you prepared yourself, it was not as a common day, it was a special day for you, you prepared yourself, you took your Bible, when you left your house, you prayed, Sunday morning, the same thing, Sunday morning, you woke up early, you woke up early, you prepared yourself, you came to the church because you wanted to be close to the altar. You did not want to be the last ones to sit at the back. You wanted to come close to the altar. You wanted to be rested so you could eat the words the pastor was preaching. Perhaps that's you now. 
And if that's you now, do not lose it because that's what God wants. He wants the same enthusiasm, the same humbleness. When the pastor was preaching, you were learning and you said inside of you, Amen. Perhaps nowadays you say, I know it. I've heard it before. Loss of the first love. When the word of God is less effective, not because it is less effective, but, but because you are less receptive. So God is saying, repent. Well, remember first. Remember where you came from. Repent and go back. And if you do, the Bible says, the fruit of the tree of life will be given to you. And if you don't, the light which one day you had, you will have no more. I can't lose his light. I cannot lose his light. So do not allow your love for him to age. Whether you are in the church for a year, a month, five years, two, three, ten or nearly 40 years. Do not allow time to age your faith. Amen. Amen.